I think they're coming to say hello. Build with slowing down your production numbers since 2018. sand in the bag. Yes, I filmed. I'm taking it <laughs> out. <laughs> I am so stoked to see this. This might be the prettiest job site I've ever been to. It's hard to forget where you parked. I have never seen anything like this. I haven't. Hello everybody. Welcome to the BuildWit vlog today. We're coming to you again from Alberta, Canada. This is the second installment of the Canadian series this year, and we are at a oil sands mine. So the oil sands is a place where they strip away the topsoil and expose this oily sand that they then take to a plant and they can extract oil from it, which is a obviously very valuable commodity in today's world. This, what we're standing on right now, is petroleum coke. This is a byproduct of the refining process. And there's no commercial use for it typically, so what they're doing with all of this petroleum coke is they're hauling it from the plant, they're placing it where this pit used to be, for the sake of reclamation. As they place this, the water drains out, it gets nice and solid, and then once it's to grade, they're gonna place topsoil and they'll plant it. So, it looks like a moonscape right now, but eventually, within the next few years, this will all be planted and ready for deer and animals, and you won't be able to tell this was a mine anymore. The biggest thing I've noticed so far is that the reclamation efforts are absolutely fantastic. So the mine is next door, this is all previously mined, and soon you won't be able to tell this is a mine anymore. They have a Hitachi 870 loading this material into 777s. The 777s are hauling it to where they're placing it. We're gonna go check that out. A lot of rain last night, the pit's a little wet, so we're waiting for operations to start up in the pit while we're waiting. We're at the select reclamation operation. This is so buttery, so amazing. We have the sun today. We didn't have the sun yesterday. I love the sun. We have this Coke, which is a warmer temperature because coming out of the plant, they wash it and they process it with hot water. So this material is really hot right now and the air is a little cold, so you have the steam coming off the 870. I guess one other thing that's unique here is you'll hear the clanking with the bucket coming up as it, as it empties out, and that's because there's chains welded within that bucket. I'll, I'll see if I can figure out how big that bucket is. If I had to guess, it's like around seven yards, but you'll, you'll see the chains and the clanking. They weld chains inside the bucket to prevent material from sticking in that bucket. If material sticks, you get that carry back, and now you're not filling that bucket as much as it, it can. So sure, on one cycle, you might be missing you know, half a yard or whatever it is, which isn't that much, but you're doing hundreds and sometimes thousands of cycles in a day. So that adds up to a lot of lost production. Those chains, since they're whacking around in there, they whack all the mud loose, they whack everything that's soft in there, sticking to it loose, so you're keeping that bucket nice and clean to get as much material in there per pass as possible. Three more important pieces of information. One, the operator's name is Cliff. Two, the company we're with today, Morgan Construction. Thank you for having us out. This is very kind of you. Three, I was wrong on the size of the bucket. It's actually a 10-yard bucket, monster bucket on that machine. It's oversized because this material is a lot lighter. And you'll notice, too, that they're just mounding the material up on the trucks. 
Because of the weight of the material, it's super light. You can't overload a 100 ton truck. It's designed for rock. It's designed for heavier dirt clay. So since it's designed for heavier loads, 100 tons, you can just mound this material up in there and get a lot more headed to the fill. We saw over there the 870 loading the trucks. The trucks are hauling to here where they're placing the material. This is the final lift. Interestingly enough, this material changes a lot and it settles. So using GPS isn't an option. They can't go build something to a, a, a grade that's always changing. So instead, you'll see out there, they have these boards. They've placed the first lift. They do about a meter at a time. We're in Canada, metric system, go figure. They've done one meter, and this dozer is basically building this to skim the top of the boards. And that's when he knows that he's placed enough material here. And as this goes on, as the years roll on, this will all continue to settle out, shake out, get nice and firm, and then they'll be able to reclaim the land. And you see the trees on the outside of it, all of that will be covering this land here pretty soon. So we are now in the pit. We just drove in here. It is wild. We can only shoot Morgan Construction's equipment. We can't shoot the mine equipment because it's just a condition of us being here. Fortunately, you know, hopefully we can come back and actually work with the mining operator. We would love to. We're at kind of the bottom. This was a previous sump. And this is the material they're after right here. This is the oil sand. So it is sand with oil mixed in to it. And all of this is what's hauled to the processing facility and is washed, the oil extracted, and then the oil put into pipelines and sent to refineries. What's happening down here, Morgan Construction, is basically uh, they've pumped all the water out of the sump and they're going in here with their excavator, their 6015B behind me, and they're mining the last little bit of oil sand out of this area and hauling it out so that then this can be filled back in with overburden and waste material. The reason why they're not loading trucks right now is because it rained last night, heavy rain. So instead of trying to get trucks in here that are just gonna be sliding around making a mess, they gave it half the day to let it dry out. They're squeegeeing off all the haul roads with their blades and dozers and then the excavator is setting up their cut right now for when the trucks get here in about, about an hour. I'm just blown away by this stuff. I mean, it is. You can't get it off your finger. Now my fingers are black. Great. Hey, Aaron, what was that? So, you may have just heard something that sounded a lot like a gunshot. It's ridiculously alarming and happens every 20, 30 seconds. It is to keep birds from landing on the water that gathers within the pit. The thing is, so this is naturally occurring, but when you expose it and you mix it with water, the oil starts to separate. Oil doesn't mix with water. And that oil will sit on the top layer of that water. Now that doesn't get into any anything outside of the mine. All of that's contained and eventually cleaned up and the oil skimmed off, the water 
clean, but when it's in the mine like this, they want to keep birds from landing in there, so they use these bird bangers around any sitting bodies of water to scare the birds off so they don't land in that water. It's extremely effective, and then they can take that water and process it as they can. So to give everybody a little context as far as why contractors like Morgan Construction are used on a massive mine site like this, the reason is the mine operator likes to focus on the production work. So here, oil sand, they focus on removing bulk overburden and mining the sand. That's what makes them the money. That's what they like to control because they need a constant stream of that sand and oily material to the plant so they can keep the plant running, keep paying the bills, making that money. There's a lot of other odd jobs that need to be taken care of around a mine site, but it requires smaller equipment or specialty equipment or whatever it is. And it's not typically year round work. Since it's inconsistent, requires different types of equipment, they will rely on contractors like Morgan Construction to take care of those smaller tasks. So the project we see down bottom there, they're not running the 400 ton trucks that are hauling the sand today. They're running 789s and I saw some 777s down there. They're all being loaded by that 6015 with a 15 yard bucket and they're just getting that last little bit of sand out of that sump so that that sump can be filled with overburdened material. So the contractor basically goes from job to job throughout the pit taking care of those smaller, quote unquote, smaller tasks for the mine operator, so the mine operator can keep doing what they do best. So this is a Caterpillar 789C haul truck, 200 ton truck, roughly. And it's a brute. Over here, over there, they have the 789F, so it's a newer truck, a little bit nicer, a little more fuel efficient, but built roughly the same. These things are workhorses. And just to put it into perspective for everybody, this is a 200 ton truck. This is Morgan's truck. The mine trucks are 400 ton trucks. So all of the mine trucks, they said hundred, there's hundreds, plural, of mine trucks out here are typically about 400 tons. 200 ton truck, 400 ton truck. Wild, this is the small truck. Small, small. So on a call right now in my field office, the 789 haul truck. Um, this is the weird part about BuildWit is we're traveling, we're in the middle of an oil sands mine right now, but there's also a company back home. That's how we pay for all the videos. We have a software business and a marketing business that generates revenue that allows us to do what we do. Uh, and a lot of my time is spent out in the field doing what you guys see. And then a lot of my time is spent helping to run the company, which is like this. So typically I don't have calls when I'm traveling, but right now we're waiting on haul truck drivers. This call is going on with some of our team. Thought I'd dial in. So here we are. Break time's over, bud. Time to go back to work. What do you think this, this is, a union shop? Truck drivers are here. Ground is dry, dry. And now it's time to make some money, move some material, and have some fun. So a little bit longer, they're all doing the pre-shift. Pre-shift is you walk around your truck, you make sure the tires are good, you make sure nothing's leaking, you make sure nothing's funny, and if it is, you call that guy and he fixes it. 
Then you fire the machine up, let it warm up for a little bit. You have to get the fluids up to operating temperature in these big pieces of equipment. You can't just tear off like a car. And then while they're letting it warm up, they'll clean their windows and dial it in for their shift. Typically they're 12 hour shifts. So you're in that machine a long time and you want to make sure it's good to go before you go off to work. So here we have the 6015 loading the 789s. This is a much larger truck than a machine this small would load. However, a machine this size, 150 ton excavator, is a lot more versatile in an application like this. They can do a lot more, so they don't like to go beyond this. But the bigger trucks are nice for longer hauls. So it looks a little funny, and the pass match isn't exactly ideal, but this is the best scenario, best setup for this specific application. So if you're wondering what the red tanks are on the back of that machine, that is fire suppression. So if that machine were to catch fire, the foam in those tanks floods the system, suffocating fire. All right, we just drove back out of the pit. We're up here at Morgan's trailer office facility on site, and we're all done for today. As I explained, we're not allowed to shoot the mining operations themselves. So we just were able to shoot the Morgan operations. And the funny thing is they're pretty slow right now because the summer is the slow time. It's counterintuitive. You'd think it's the fast time, but it's a slow time because the material is so soft, it's hard to work in, hard to drive around on. Winter is when they really ramp up and they're just full send. So hopefully we can come back in the winter months and see them working and potentially we can visit with one of the actual mine operators up here one day. But until then, that's all we got for you. Uh, we're gonna spend like the 45 minute drive out of the plant and then the rest of the afternoon in Fort McMurray. Tomorrow is really exciting because we do get to show you some really big trucks. We saw 789s today, but tomorrow we're gonna see 797s get built. I cannot, cannot wait. That is one hell of a surprise. We weren't planning on that. So stay tuned. We'll see you on the next installment, the Canadian vlog series. Stay dirty, everybody.